In this video, we'll see how to alter the ground floor of the project, add a staircase, and create a new level using the reformed floor plan as a reference. First, I'm going to delete some of the partitions and joineries of the current project. To do this, select the Eraser tool, click on an object, and right-click to delete. Make sure you delete one object or element at a time. This way, the back can fix the intersections and trims automatically. Then I can draw the new partitions. I can right-click to exit the eraser function and double-click on this partition to activate the wall tool with the same color, line style and thickness settings. Now click on this corner. I need to enable the orthogonality locking and then click on the inner side of the wall to create the new partition. Do the same in this wall. Click in this corner and then click on the end point of the inner side of this wall. I'm going to use the parallel wall tool to draw the walls for the bathroom and the wardrobe. I have to enter the parallel distance before drawing. In this case I type 2.1 and press enter. Now I click on this wall, which will be my reference. Now click on this side of the wall to create the first line of the parallel wall, and then once again underneath the first line to create the entire wall. Now I'm going to type a new parallel distance. This time is going to be 0.6. I press enter, and then click on this line of the wall. Now to its left side, and then once again to draw the space for the wardrobe. Do a right click to exit the current function and a double left click on this door to activate the door function with the settings of this joinery. Accept and insert the door in this wall and also here. Do a double right click to open the joinery window. Change the size of the door to 0.6 and the fixed distance intersection to 0.1. Now place this bathroom door in this wall. Do a right click to exit the function and double click on this wardrobe to open its settings. Make sure to check the even number box and insert the wardrobe in this partition. I'm going to start drawing the staircase. There are many ways to do it, as the back is quite versatile, so feel free to try a different method if you want. I'll start with the offset tool and type a distance of 0.95. Click on this line of the wall, and then on this direction, and then I click on this line, and then on this side. This way, now I've got two lines at 0.95 meters from each respective wall. Type a new offset distance of 0.90 and make another offset from this wall. I can use the Length and Shorten tool to decrease the length of these lines to a reference. For this, click on this line and then on this line to shorten the object to this given reference. Now you can do the same with this line. Now I use the Divide tool to cut this line between two references. For this, first click on the line that will be divided and then on the two intersecting elements. To create the steps, I select the Offset tool again. Type a distance of 0.3 and click first on the initial line and then click in the offset direction as many times as needed. Do the same with the rest of the steps. To close the sides of the stairs, I'm going to use the Line tool. To make the railing, I can use the Offset tool again, with a distance of 0.05 meters. I'm going to shorten this line, indicating this reference. Now, to fix the intersections of these lines, 
I'll use the fillet tool. For this, first click on one line and then on the other. I'll do the same for this intersection. Now I can use the line tool to close the railings. I'm going to deactivate the orthogonality locking to draw the split steps corner landing. To draw the staircase path arrow, I can use the line tool as well. If you want to force the midpoint approximation mark while using the line function, click on this button and only the midpoints of the drawing will be highlighted. Note that if you change the approximation tools while using a function, this change will only be effective for this action. Change the orthogonality angle to 45 and left click to restart the line function to draw the arrowhead. Start from this endpoint, indicate direction and type 0 0.15 and enter. You can double left click to release the line and to restart the function. Then you can draw the other line. Now deactivate the orthogonality to finish the arrowhead. I'm going to delete the main entrance door and open the joinery's window to create a new one. This door will have two slabs and will be inserted at a fixed distance of 0.1 meters. The main slab will have a width of 0.8 and an opening angle of 90 degrees. The second slab will have a width of 0.6 and will be closed. Now I can drag it to this wall to insert it at 0.1 meters from the closest intersection. This floor plan will be the ground floor of my project, therefore I'm going to save it with the name of Level 0. To draw the first floor, I'm going to use this floor plan as my reference so I can go ahead and save it again as a new file called Level 1. Now I can start modifying this floor plan. First I'm going to delete these walls and joineries and then I will erase the partitions and joineries to the left of the staircase. Remember to delete the objects one by one to avoid creating holes in the walls. Right click to exit the eraser function and double left click on the wall to activate the wall tool with the settings of this wall. Now click on this line and then on this line to connect both walls. Let's create two windows for this floor. Open the joineries tool, go to window and check the window seal option. Set a fixed distance of 3.4 and a window length of 1.7. Change the color and place the window in this wall to be forced at 3.4 meters from the closest intersection. Now double right click to open the joinery's window again and change the fixed distance value to 2.4. If I need to change the window style, just double right click again and select the large window. Now press OK and place it in this wall. Now this window will be forced at 2.4 meters from the closest intersection. I'm going to draw a floor opening using the line tool. Now I can select the offset tool to draw the railings for the opening. For this enter a value of 0 0.07 and offset both lines. I can easily fix the intersection using the fillet tool. Let's draw the terrace. For this I select the line tool again. Starting from this corner I draw a line of 5.90 
and now I create another line with the same length. Close the terrace creating another line. Now I can use the offset tool to create the railing and the fillet tool to fix the intersections. Now I'm going to modify the staircase for this floor. For this, delete this line and then shorten these two. To move the arrowhead, just click on the Move tool and select the three lines of the arrowhead. Now confirm the selection by doing a right click with the mouse and move it from this point to this point. Now I can use the offset tool to draw the railing of the first floor and then the shorten lengthen tool to extend or reduce the rest of the lines of the staircase. Now I'm going to insert the pillars in the ground floor of the project. The other file is already saved and open in the background. To see it, go to Window and select the other file. I'm going to change the color to create the blue pillars. Then I open the pillars window and choose the rectangular shape. I'll keep the same dimensions as default and check the Place Away From Walls box. I type a distance from the walls of 6 cm and finally set the insertion point to the top left corner of the pillar. Now I have to insert the pillars away from the walls of the corners. For this I click on the outer line of the first wall and then on the outer line of the second wall. After doing this, the pillar will be automatically inserted at 6 cm away from the lines of the walls I have selected. To insert the pillar in the other corner, I need to make sure the insertion point of the pillar matches the direction of the walls of the corner. Therefore, in this case, I need to rotate the pillar around its insertion point. To do this, Press and hold the shift key and left click with the mouse. Once the direction of the pillar matches the corner, insert the pillar the same way as before, clicking first on this line and then on this line to make the insertion automatically. You can repeat this process with the rest of the corners of the drawing. Now I'm going to change the insertion options of the pillars. Double right click to open the settings, uncheck the place away box and set the insertion point in the center of the pillar. This time I'm going to use the intersection mark tool to create a point where two objects of the drawing will intersect. Once the tool is active, click on this pillar and then on this one. After doing this, you'll get two guides showing the two possible intersections between the two pillars. Now you can do the same process for the rest of the pillars you need to place in the drawing. After creating all the guides, click on the pillars icon again and accept to start placing the pillars in the center of the guides I have just created. After inserting all the pillars, I can delete all the marks using the selection by attribute function. To do this, go to Utilities, Selection, and Selection by Attributes. In the list of attributes, expand the Items option 
and select Marks. Now make a selection of the region that will be affected by this function and right click to confirm the selections. Now all the marks of the region are selected so I can press the delete key to get rid of them.